Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I wanted to compact a ton of DIY slash crafting inspiration for you all. Uh, I know this is going to be a longer video but it is so relaxing just to sit and watch someone craft and make pretty DIY home decor and hopefully this will inspire you and get you a jump start for 2020 to get into your crafting zone and put together some beautiful decor pieces that you can cherish in your home. 2019 was a big year for me and I was super busy and cranked out a ton of decor pieces and these are my favorite projects slash your favorite projects and I use non-seasonal projects so these are items that can be used all year round or some of them have, are using like hearts so you can just use those for Valentine's Day and these are all beautiful farmhouse pieces a lot of you all wasn't even around last year I didn't have as many subscribers and these are projects that I'm super proud of that I don't want to be forgotten about so just in case you missed it I want to jump on into crafting and show you some beautiful projects so these are my top 10 DIY Dollar Tree projects that I hope that you can find some inspiration from. The first craft that I'm sharing with you today that I made last year was this beautiful puzzle heart DIY. This was originally intended for Valentine's Day, the use of a heart, but I think you could definitely leave this in your farmhouse decor all year long. So to put these together, I'm using some of these Dollar Tree signs and they have these again this year, so you definitely can still pick up all of the supplies and make this for yourself. And I thought it was so cool using one of these puzzles to make this DIY. Uh, puzzles are definitely something that I wanna try to incorporate into some more upcoming DIYs, Just because it was so fun to use and a lot of you all enjoyed that. I can remember the exact night that I made this. I guess it's going on about a year and I actually uh, had the really cool idea of making the puzzle heart and then I called my mom to find out what I should write, what the little quote at the bottom should say. We were definitely kind of thinking something that said together, uh, so it kind of went with the puzzle. So it was just something really fun, a little fun memory that I just remember sitting and trying to just get the perfect little quote. But to make this, I'm putting two of the large signs together. I'm not sure what all is all over that one sign, um, it kind of looks like grease spots or something. I'm not sure if I bought it like that or if it's just from something spilling on it. I'm not sure, but I put these two signs together with those large popsicle sticks and uh, something really cool that gave it a cool effect was uh, since these signs has these little indentions, I filled them up with black paint and it kind of showed through uh, painting this with the elephant color gray paint and it made it look so rustic and like real barn wood. So I thought that was a really cool effect. I wanted the heart to be neutral color, but I wanted it to pop out, so I'm just going with white, and I just covered this heart. Dollar Tree has out these uh, wooden hearts again this year, and they even have some that don't have the hanger on there. They were just hung up by a piece in the back, so that's perfect, uh, so you don't have to worry about covering the holes at the top, and I just dressed that with a little bit of gray. So it's just so fun going back and watching how much my videos have changed from a year ago. You might not notice too much, but I have been trying to put the little extra touches. My editing skills have got a lot better. I'm kind of considering hiring an editor so I can try to focus more on the creative part of my videos because editing for me can take anywhere from 6 to 12 hours if it's like a hard video that I have a lot of like beauty shots as I call them which is whenever I am trying to stage all the crafts and like make the shots look really pretty and it just takes so long. So it's just something, kind of a goal of mine for 2020 is to kind of test out an editor and see if that's something that would kind of save me some time and maybe even free up a little bit of personal time. This was such a cool idea. I am not sure what inspired using the puzzle. I saw on Pinterest that some people were um, put making signs where the entire heart was made out of puzzle pieces. So I am thinking that's kind of what it was, but I love how the center is still flat and I was able to add that little metal flower in there and then I'm just hot gluing all of that down I added that little jute bow in there I think most of these projects have a bow in there so I'm not taking the time to show you exactly how I'm making every bow I cut all of that out to trim this video down but I will list every one of today's projects down below the full 
video link so that you can go and get more detailed on how I made all these projects. Uh, also for 2020, I would like to make some printables. I know I print out a ton of these words to use on projects and I want them to be available for you to just get on there and print them out super easy. And that's maybe something that I need to put on a website. I know I don't really have a live website right now. It's something that I'm kind of thinking about and uh, maybe going to try to find somebody to handle that as well. There is just seriously YouTube videos and crafting takes so many hours. It's hard to start new projects or kind of tag on extra work whenever you don't really find the time, especially if you have a ton of kids because time is just taking up. But I think this is a beautiful piece. I was so proud of this whenever I had got it completed. I was so excited to share it with you all. I didn't notice until watching this video back that that little candle is crooked in the lantern, but um, but it's definitely one of my favorite projects is why I put it first. The second DIY I'm sharing with you is the set of hearts that have the lock and the key with the little bows on them. These were so cute. Whenever I made them, I would just I was just in love with them. Now, I see a few things that I might change, but I still really like the look of them. I might not have went with more of like a beige tone to them, maybe more um, whiter, like a lighter color, but they're still uh, one of my favorite things that I made, especially for kind of like the Valentine's Day. But I am just in love with vintage keys. I always have been fascinated with like having or collecting old keys or locks. I just have always loved them. So it's definitely fun to make your own. I thought um, this was a, such a cool creative way to make your own keys. So to make these, I am using the Dollar Tree hearts. Like I say, they have these out again. I painted them with the mineral color paint and then just kind of brushing over the edges with this brown to give them a little bit of dimension and just add some extra detail to them. And then I kind of ran it over the middle for uh, the dry brushing. And then to make these little keys, um, I just kind of like studied on this for a very long time and thought uh, there has to be a way to use Dollar Tree items to make keys that would still look really sturdy and kind of out of wood. But these little uh, dowel rods were perfect for this job. If you just score these little dowel rods with your scissors, you can just kind of break them uh, evenly with a clean cut. You can kind of clean it up a little bit with your scissors if there's any splinters. I needed the little piece at the end for the key part. So this was just a perfect idea. I'm using a pack of the wooden letters from Dollar Tree and I kind of trim that down so that the back of the a letter F will kind of hide behind the little dowel rod. I got that glued down and then you can see the two little pieces that stick out just like a little old vintage skeleton key. And then those wooden hearts had came from Target Dollar Spot, but Dollar Tree has a little wooden sticker heart, so I'm thinking those would work. I don't own any right now, so I'm not sure how big they would be. I sprayed them with some silver spray paint and then went over them with chalk paint to make them look really vintage. I wanted to make a lock. I really wasn't intending that the lock had to be a heart shape. It's just the only thing that I had. Uh, so you could kind of cut a shape out of a piece of foam board if that's what you want to use. I love using those little black squiggly lines around everything I make. I just think it gives it a finished look, yet kind of still like a homemade crafty look. I love uh, keeping Pinterest nearby for inspiration. I wanted to see how the keyhole should look. I wanted it to kind of be size comparable to the key so it looked a little bit realistic. I'm hot gluing that little rope on the back uh, to kind of make it a little bit of a hanger, but I thought those were the perfect little set of lock and key that would be perfect to go in the center of these. And I might try to attempt to make these again and use them on a different project just because I love them so much. 
I made some little burlet bows and then tied the little lock and key around them, added some little lace and flowers, and some nautical rope to hang them up, and I thought they turned out so pretty. Like I say, if I made them again, I wouldn't make them um, such a brown color, maybe more of like a lighter gray, but the gray key and lock does pop off of it, so it worked out really nicely. Next up is this home sweet home little circle sign with the cotton painted around the edges. I actually picked up this circle from Target Dollar Spot. I'm thinking it was three or five dollars, but sometimes Dollar Tree gets circular signs that you could paint this easily as well. I start by using a tiny little paintbrush and just kind of swiggle a little uh, wreath, I guess, like kind of like a painted wreath around the edges. And I wanted my cotton to look all symmetrical. I knew hand painting it would not get that effect. So to get uh, everything to look like cotton, I just drew it out on a piece of printer paper and trimmed that out. So I would have a stencil to be able to trace over and over. I know the cotton was really popular last year. Uh, especially kind of in the springtime when Dollar Tree had some put out in their little branches that they put out in their bouquets for spring. I don't use a ton of like the cotton floral in my home. It's just not something we really live around so I don't know I'm just not really like familiar with growing cotton or anything so it's just something that I've never really like just had a desire to put all over my home. It is beautiful and I love it painted like this. I think it is so pretty. To make the home sweet home I just got on Google Images and I printed I, I typed in home sweet home and then just printed out um, in about the size that I needed and I uh, scribble on the back and then I can trace over that so it will leave um, the font that I'm wanting to write in there and then I go over it with black paint markers. Uh, paint markers are such an easy way to make things look a lot nicer whenever you're hand painting them. I made another bow for this and that's how simple this came together. I think it is gorgeous and something I'm excited to get back out next year. The fourth craft I am sharing with you today is this DIY window using Dollar Tree items and actually getting to use real wood. So I have saw these DIY windows everywhere. Everybody was taking picture frames and making them and they honestly just did not look good quality. Like uh, even uh, whenever they were filming, like when they tried to pick it up, it was breaking or coming apart and they just said you had to be very careful with it. So I knew there had to be a way to use or real wood from Dollar Tree or something a lot more sturdy. So I had actually put a video up on my channel that was $1 Dollar Tree hacks to make farmhouse signs and it was showing how you can cut this canvas off of these frames and you get left with a perfect uh, wood a rectangle that makes the perfect frame and you can stain these and I put a piece of paper behind them to make gorgeous farmhouse signs. So after I had made those, it just got me to thinking that these are the perfect real wood frames that I could glue together and make a larger piece. So this was perfect for this project. You have to be very careful when cutting that canvas off uh, because you do have to apply pressure and please don't slip if you use a utility knife. But I think it is so worth it to get such a beautiful piece. You could fill in all of those cracks with a wood filler if you'd like to, but I was kind of just going for a vintage old look, so I liked the little cracks in there. I give this a nice base coat of white paint and then kind of went over it with a little bit of mineral and this truffle brown paint to kind of mix it in and look like it is uh, some weathered wood. Last year I was all about upgrading my floral to be a little bit more high quality than Dollar Tree. So I am crossing my fingers that Dollar Tree puts out some beautiful floral this year. I just prefer going to Walmart. 
Uh, you do have to give sometimes $2 or $3 uh, for some floral picks, but like I say, I just feel like they're nicer quality, so I don't care to spend the extra couple dollars to get a piece that I'm proud of that I don't care to hang up for longer. And Walmart does offer 97 cent floral pieces too, so definitely keep your eyes open. I'm excited to see what all the stores are going to be coming out with their spring floral and even see what Dollar Tree has. But I just hot glued my eucalyptus leaves down on one of these natural uh, wreaths from Dollar Tree. I think I ended up putting two together and they just uh, wired that to this frame and this is something that you could trade the wreath in and out for and make it seasonal or just leave it up like this I all year. Spend too much time just getting ready Let me be honest I don't know a single thing that I haven't done to make you notice me Last year I made a ton of spring DIYs and this was one of my favorite spring DIYs that I made. I love little musical note paper that looks all vintage and I love little birds. I have an old bird that someone gave me when I was really little and it's always been so special to me. I still have it and I put it up so it's super safe um, but still in a place that I can see it very often. So they're just, I don't know, it just I've always loved like special little birds and this was kind of like a ceramic piece. So this just reminded me of that and something that I had as a little girl. But I'm taking one of those hurricane vases from the Dollar Tree and also painted one of those little glass candlesticks white and wrapped some jute string around the top and the bottom and then... Um, I know in the last project I said I didn't love all of Dollar Tree's floral pieces, but this uh, one with the little purple berries and it kind of has like a little velvety finish on the greenery was definitely one of my favorite floral pieces that they've ever put out. So I did enjoy using that back in the spring. And then I just printed off a little bird silhouette and held that over the music paper and cut that out and then added in some of Dollar Tree's little decor. Let me be real here when I see my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame. Coming in at number six, even though these are not in any particular order, <laughs> is this windmill that I made. Uh, my mom actually came up with the idea of using these placemats for this windmill and she made one and shared it with me and I loved it. And she was wanting me to share it with all of you all. So, so excited to get to share this with you all. And this is one of the fastest uh, watched videos on my channel last year. Uh, especially in the beginning before we hit like fall videos. So I was so excited that you guys really enjoyed it. And uh, to make these, I'm using some placemats from Dollar Tree and I'm just kind of measuring out. You can see how um, the wider end is two and a half inches and the top is about one inch. And then I kind of uh, connected those lines so it made the perfect little windmill blade. I wanna give you a million things cause isn't love what it's all about and how to make you smile This is a project that I'm excited to get back out. Even though it's something you can use all year, I kind of put all of my stuff away for Christmas just because my house was so crowded and overwhelming. So I'm excited to get all of these back out and I might try to attempt to make these again uh, just because they were super fun and uh, I use these little skewers from the dollar store and I tape them down as well as hot glued them down and then push them all around uh, into a milk jug cap and they it was kind of a little tricky to push in there but after you got the hang of it they were a little bit easier and after I got them all pushed in they were a little crowded so I did end up removing one and kind of uh, space them out a little bit more evenly. Hello, how'd you do? I'm not broken, I'm just split in two. Hope you're fine and got time to do everything you said you would. Frames of the past and the memory of. I put a lot of hot glue in the back, but be super careful because the milk jug lid uh, did melt the first attempt I tried that, so I did have to try to make it again. And then this is how my mom made the original one. She made it flat so that um, it would just kind of set up on a shelf or lean up against the wall or something if you were setting it on a table. But she also made one by adding 
the third leg or dowel rod in the back so it did stand up and a lot of you all said that you made it like that as well so you'll have to let me know in the comments below uh, if you made this project as well as any of the others and kind of what modifications you made to that everyone sees things differently and uh, especially like I'm just crafting along with you all. Like most of the time I have an idea and I just start filming and try to make it. So yes, you definitely can watch me make it and then gain ideas from that. And I do that myself. Like after I make each craft, I kind of think like I could have done this different or that would be cool if you did this or added that. But it's just something that I don't want to like go back and refilm. I want these to be like original projects that were just like my creation. So obviously I'm heavily inspired by Pinterest and uh, all of my other DIY friends and what I see in the stores. So I don't mean like I am inventing all of these things, but I just want them to be more kind of like my original ideas than kind of constantly going back and changing everything. But I added some silver paint and elephant color paint and then went over it with a little bit of brown to look a little rusty. And I think it's the perfect rustic farmhouse windmill. Coming in at number seven is this metal flower hanging. I was also super proud to make this. I know you all would love it. A lot of people enjoy the mason jar crafts and this one was no exception. It's one of my most popular videos on my channel. It's in my little popular feed. So I'm just excited about it and I just think it's beautiful for springtime and can be perfectly customized to go with anyone's decor. To make this, I used one of these little plank signs. This was actually from the Easter collection at the Dollar Tree, but uh, they have these little plank signs out for every holiday so you can make this anytime. And then I removed the little bunnies and saved them for an, a different project and then kind of sanded down where they went so everything would be nice and flat. And I hot glued down uh, my jumbo popsicle sticks. I highly recommend these for your crafting supplies. I picked them up from Walmart. They're just uh, two to three dollars for a bunch of them and I use them on like every project, like tons of projects. So it's definitely something I would look into picking up and they're definitely a uh, high quality and worth the money. So I go ahead and give this a nice base white coat of paint. Uh, I mostly use chalk paint in 2019 and I'm going to stick with it until I fall in love with something else. But it's just, I get a ton of questions on why I choose chalk paint, but just try it. It's all, You can get small bottles at Walmart of Waverly chalk paint for just a couple dollars and you can get the larger ones for I think around five or six dollars. So it's not a huge investment just to try it for yourself, even if you just test it out. I love it because you get so much more coverage and it dries quickly. It's easy to stress. This video is not sponsored. I just love using them. Uh, I've never been sponsored by them. Plaid has sent me a couple little things, but they never send me like the actual products that I use all the time. They send me like new products. So that's something I also want to be sharing too, is trying out some new crafting products and just not always using what I'm comfortable with so I really want to kind of uh, test my creativity and try some new things in 2020 so I think that will be fun to watch uh, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on any of the fun I made those little faux lines to make this look like a plank sign and then uh, painted the metal flowers gray these were actually just little wind chimes from Dollar Tree and I keep showing you that I have five of them but they were just super crowded so I ended up using just three and I recommend bending up the little petals so they have more of a three-dimensional look to them and I originally painted them just gray and went over them with white for a little bit of highlight but after I put my sign together I realized that they they really need some color so I do end up adding a little bit of a turquoise a blue color and you can see that my frame was broke it was already broke at Dollar Tree but I went ahead and purchased it just because I knew I just wanted to cut this little jar out uh, you could very easily just print a jar out online or try to draw one but I thought it was just really pretty and already like the wording on there so I mod podge that down to my sign and then put my little flowers on there you made me come undone. now I know that it's okay Unlike my friends, you are nothing like them. Oh. How could they say I was broken? How could they say you made me come undone? Now I know that it's okay. Unlike my friends, you are nothing like them. 
I wanted them to have the 3D stems to look like they were really coming out of that jar. So to get those, I just uh, took a floral stem from Dollar Tree that I didn't really like or that had lost half of its little flower pieces. And I uh, used a pair of wire cutters and just cut the little stems down and then made me some little leaves out of the burlap ribbon. And this is how it came together. I think the blue off the flowers goes perfectly with the little blue mason jar. And this is such a beautiful large piece that was made for very inexpensive. Number eight is this set of sconces with a little spring floral in there. I love projects like this because you can make them and put the spring floral in there and then whenever it becomes fall, take them out and put a little bouquet of sunflowers in there and it just can be hung up all year uh, but yet have fresh new looks because you can just change them out. And I just really enjoyed making these. I'm hoping so bad that Dollar Tree puts these signs back out. Uh, I know a ton of people use these and they're so fun, especially with those little 3D metal pieces on there that you can take off. So I'm using two of these signs, even though they had different prints, they were made exactly the same. And I picked up two of them. I went ahead and painted them with my truffle brown chalk paint and made the faux wood plank signs. Went over them, I dry brushed a little bit of a lighter color and then sanded them down a little bit to make them look really rustic. And I love the effect that they get because I really think they look like a faux wood. And then Dollar Tree had these little jars with a metal hanger on there. I just I removed them. They just kind of clipped off and then painted the jars with some dark gray elephant color chalk paint. I needed something for the jar to hold on to so I picked up some of these cheap little plastic adhesive hooks. I didn't trust the adhesive that it came with so I do end up hot gluing those down and I dry brushed some of the elephant color paint over these to kind of uh, make them look less shiny and more like galvanized wood. I also took a piece of my sandpaper and kind of distressed the jars a little bit. I clipped back on my hooks and then I was able to hang them from those little plastic hooks. I think these would also be uh, really cute with anything other than keys if that's not your thing. I picked up these little metal keys from Amazon. I just tied them in the middle of the bow and I love how it gives it more of a vintage look. But if you don't like that, you could definitely just leave them plain or you could dangle um, down a heart or even um, some cute little ornaments. If you picked up any ornaments that were farmhouse kind of, uh, I know Walmart had a ton of ornaments that didn't really look like Christmas and like they were tiny little items you could use all year. I filled them up with some of these beautiful, uh, bright little floral picks. Like I say, I don't, I like Dollar Tree spring floral. I think I ended up using a lot more of the Dollar Tree in the springtime than I even did in Walmart. So I'm excited to see what they put out in spring. And then I wanted some larger holes drilled because I did want to add some nautical rope. So I attached that to the top and that finished these up and they are such a nice piece that is so inexpensive. I just made these for a few dollars and they look gorgeous hanging both of them on either side of a photo or like a piece of wall art. At number nine, I'm sharing this little pedestal. It's one of my favorite DIYs. It's so simple, yet I love it. I know it has a pumpkin on there and says fall, 
but that was just staged for a fall video. It was the fall time when I made this, but I love it. I think it is so beautiful, and it was made for just a couple bucks. I used one of these uh, little shaped signs from Dollar Tree, and then I picked up these little beads from a thrift store. Um, they were just laying there, so I picked them up, but you definitely can find beads from Hobby Lobby or any craft store. I started by removing the uh, little adhesive tags on the back, and then using the largest beads in this pack, I just glued one on every corner of this piece, and then I'm going to paint them a white and then distress it a little bit with sandpaper, and that's how simple it was. Like I say, just a couple dollars to put together this gorgeous little pedestal tray that you can put um, candles. This would be perfect to decorate for Valentine's and Easter. Um, I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for more of those signs because I want to make some more of these for myself. And the last DIY that I have for you today is this pretty little frame using $1 calendars from Dollar Tree. I started with one of these uh, little paradise signs that Dollar Tree had in the summer when they come out with like their tiki collection or Hawaiian parties and uh, I'm also using this dollar calendar. Now thankfully they had this uh, print printed twice so I was able to kind of combine it all, uh, the two pictures together to kind of make one larger piece and I thought this was like a really cool idea. I pushed the love the little things over to one side and then I tore out the other picture and then kind of cut the sides off of that. So like I say, I could kind of piece this together. And since this is like weathered barn wood, you really can't tell that I did piece uh, the little wood pieces together and make this look like a longer sign. After I had it all laid out and it looked like a solid piece, I'm applying a lot of Mod Podge to it and I like to apply thick coats and then whenever I lay it down I go ahead and add another coat on top instantly. A lot of people recommend that you let this dry. You'll have to let me know in the comments below uh, what's your best method for Mod Podge. I really don't ever have a ton of problems with things bubbling up. I did struggle a little bit whenever I put too much Mod Podge on a project, but other than that, um, I find that adding like using your heat tool or your hair dryer to dry Mod Podge also seems like it helps getting the bubbles out. I had so much fun in 2019 making all of these projects. It felt like a super busy year, but I got so much accomplished and was just building towards growing my channel and having a lot of you all just uh, enjoy watching it. I enjoy the feedback because I can kind of like take things that you like and help shape my videos that way and also kind of like experiment a little bit more with like editing and filming and even my DIYs. I definitely have grown my confidence on YouTube with like being more uh, confident in the projects that I make. I was always worried in making sure that everything was just really liked and uh, but now I'm just cut, got so much more comfortable with just making projects that I honestly love and share with you all in hopes that you will like it too. I really enjoyed putting this video together for you all. If you enjoyed it, please give me a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below which one of today's projects was your favorite and what you would love to see in 2020. Thank you all so, so much for watching and supporting my channel and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.